All right, guys, I thought I'd do a little intro into the Unication G4, G5 pager. It's available in VHF 7800, UHF 7800, and then the G4 is available in 7800 only for those of you that would only that only need that. Um, we're looking right now at the screen and the programming software um, that you will see once you start it up. And just wanted to go over a few things here. Um, first of all, you'll see the latest programming profiles here. Um, these are ones that you've used recently into the pager. If this is the first time you started up the software, you won't see anything here. But once you start building profiles and program them into pagers, you will see if you have more than one, um, more than one here, or or at least the last one that you used. Start up here at the top. Uh, Unication's done a real well, good job of organizing everything um, in these tabs so you can find them easily and labeling everything. Um, they have the user guide right in the software so any questions you may have and um, come across are laid out very simply. Um, when you start programming the pager you will see that every field that you highlight on the side of the display you will see in the software you will see um, a help menu which will give you the different criteria and what that function does and even sometimes what ranges of of whether it's frequencies or um, cap codes or, or different things like that. Um, next we'll go down to the B tab. This is the settings. Um, this is mainly for users. In the software, um, when you started up the software it asks you to enter a password. This is, the, this is a password that you create uh, the first time you run the software and then you have to enter every time you run the software after that. You can create new users and give different users access to the software to allow programming. This could come into play in a fire department or other agencies that want multiple users to be able to work on the pagers. Um, for a lot of people that are just doing it for themselves, it's uh, probably not going to be an area that you're going to use too often. Going down to C, this is where we start getting into the actual profiles or code plugs uh, that you would put into the pager. Um, here you can create a new one. Um, this would be based off of a different model, um, which is labeled on the pager on the back. Um, the easiest way is just when you get your new pager to read it out and base it off of the default code plug, which is pretty limited in what's in it anyway. It's just a few test frequencies. The other option is you can copy, create a new code plug from an existing one that you already have. I have four different code plugs in here right now. Um, I can click any one of these, click copy, yes, and then you'll see that it, it opened up a new one. So if we go back, we'll quit out of that, go back to, to cr copy from existing profile, and you'll see that there's a new one underscore new here. So then I can go into it and uh, rename it once I get into the actual file. The other option I can do to create a new profile is to read from device. If you have a brand new pager or if you have one that you may have programmed with another computer you don't have that data, um, just read that pager out here and uh, we I have a pager hooked up right now so we can read that out we'll select read from device and again if you look up here in the top of the uh, software you'll see what version the software is the user we are and then how many devices I have connected so now it uh, talked with the uh, pager and it says that I also have a profile already in the software labeled WI-MN so I can either make a new copy or replace the one that I have in there um, uh, the options up to you depending on how you have everything set up. Um, next we'll go down to D and this is where I can see all the code plugs I have in here or or profiles as Unication calls them. I have five five profiles. Um, these four were originally in here and then here's the one that we created when we did the copy of the Brad's load which we did in tab C. So here is where you would start 
from a code plug you already have loaded into the software by either double clicking like I just did and then you can see all the different settings or by going by selecting which one you want by highlighting it and then select edit down here at the bottom and we'll quit back out of there the other option is you can actually delete it so we're gonna delete the copy we made because we don't need two of those so we'll just delete it it'll ask us to verify hit yes so now we're back down to the original four Next, we'll uh, go on to E, and this is Program from Existing File. So if you already have a file in here, like say you created a template for an entire agency or something like that, and you're just plugging pagers in and you want to program them quick, you go right to this tab, Program from Existing Profile. You select, we're going to put uh, WI-MN in there. Click it. We can uh, view the details. So it's going to give us a little detail report of uh, what's in the pager. Um, depending on the size, it can take a couple minutes, or a few seconds anyways. So here we can scroll through. We'll see the model information, what bands the uh, pager has capable of, and then what protocols we have programmed in, um, and then uh, whether or not it has you know, Bluetooth trunking, which, which if it's a G4 or G5, it will have. Um, and then we can scroll down, see all the different talk groups, cap codes, all that good stuff that we have programmed in. Um, see the channel information, what we have for each zone. So we have zone 1, position 5 is WISCOM 800. Trunking talk group scan is the mode. And then which talk groups are in that scan list. And uh, all the different, whether or not you're doing an alert or not. So this one's set up for tone only versus vibrate or silent. Um, so it'll just give you a, a, a very detailed report of everything that's in the pager. You can also go and print it. And you can print it whether to a printer or um, export it as a PDF if you have a PDF printer. And this can be useful for giving to an agency that you're programming for or yourself um, because you can create this can get complicated real quick I mean it's it's got a lot of features and a lot of uses and with the amount of inf amount of things that you can put into the pager it's really like programming a radio nowadays where you can put talk groups upon talk groups upon conventional channels and scans and and all that stuff and it can you can create it into a nice quick reference guide of what's where in the pager the other option when we underneath uh, tab E is program from existing profile. If we go to next, so we have WIMN selected. Select So it uh, shows us that we have, this is our user group, and this is what it's built for. This is the model it's built for, and this is the bands it's built for. Um, there is, you see the plus here, it actually also says VHF there as well, it's just too long. It tells us when it was created. And then this is the pager model that is seen by the software connected up to the, up to the uh, computer. Um, serial number right there. And then if we want, we can go up here to connected devices and see that pager as well. And then we would just click program and it would do everything for us. Uh, the next tab is tab F and this is where you would import and export. Just like opening or saving in any other software, importing would be just that. You uh, click select and it will open up Windows Explorer or you click export and you can click export and it will also open up Windows Explorer and you can choose where you want to save it. The last tab, tab G, is the programming log. What this does is it logs every pager that you touch with the software and then also when you did what to the pager. So if you programmed it, if you read it, anything like that. So you can see right now that this pager has only been touched two times in the last few days. 
Um, I have a couple other computers I do most of the programming with, so it doesn't uh, doesn't get used on this computer very often. And you can even you can clear that report, and this resides just on the software. Um, one of the reasons why there isn't anything prior to this is because this is a new release that Unication has come out with, uh, version 3.5 beta 1. Um, previous, I was running a different version, which was beta 4. Um, so this is the latest release from Unication. Um, I'll switch over here real quick to the actual um, pager. And a couple things you'll see is, uh, so we'll start it up. And right now it's got a program in it, so you'll see what it looks like. And then we'll hook the USB cable up to it. Um, and if you have it just hooked up for charging, it you'll see across the top it says charging. And then the first red light will come on. If you are plugging it into a computer for programming and the software is open, only if the software is open will it say PC connected. So it'll say PC connected. The first light will be red because it's also charging off the computer and you the pager actually will not operate when it's talking and communicating with the software it'll operate while it's charging but not if your software is open and it says PC connected uh, when you do program it it'll either say data exported successfully at the end or unsuccessfully if you're reading the pager and then um, imported or not imported successfully if you're programming the pager. I hope you uh, find this informative and we will continue on uh, with a couple more videos in the series as we work through the programming of the pager.